The delegation of six Australian lawmakers have arrived in Washington to urge the Biden administration to halt its prosecution of the WikiLeaks founder, who is an Australian citizen. More than 60 members of Australia's parliament from across the political spectrum recently wrote an open letter to the Biden administration. It appeared as a full-page ad in The Washington Post. The lawmakers wrote, quote, we are at resolutely of the view that the prosecution and incarceration of the Australian citizen Julian Assange must end. The letter goes on to state, the prolonged pursuit of Mr. Assange wears away at the substantial foundation of regard and respect that Australians have for the justice system of the United States of America, unquote. Julian Assange has also received support from the highest levels of the Australian government. This is Australia's foreign minister, Penny Wong, speaking in July. We have made clear our view uh, that Mr Assange's case has dragged on for too long and uh, our desire that it be brought to a conclusion. And we've said that publicly and you would anticipate that that reflects also the position we articulate in private. We're joined now by the Australian Senator Peter Wish-Wilson. He's a member of the Australian Greens Party, representing Tasmania. He co-founded the Bring Julian Assange Home Parliamentary Group nearly five years ago, just flew into Washington, D.C. last night. Senator, welcome to Democracy Now! If you can explain what you plan to do in Washington, D.C., and lay out what you see as Julian Assange's case. Yeah, thank, thanks, Amy. Um, We've got a number of meetings with uh, U.S. lawmakers, uh, both in the Congress and in the Senate. We'll also be meeting with the um, Department of Justice, uh, the State Department, uh, with the U uh, Australian uh, consulate and ambassador, and a number of other stakeholders, and of course doing media uh, like, like I am now. Um, the primary aim for our delegation, and it is cross-party, is to let Americans know, uh, and, and particularly uh, those in power, that Australians feel very strongly about this issue. Uh, we feel like Julian Assange has suffered enough. Uh, he's been incarcerated now in one form or another for nearly a decade uh, for simp simply publishing the truth. Uh, he is an Australian citizen. Uh, he won the highest uh, award for journalism uh, in Australia. A number of Australian media uh, outlets, as well as, of course, key US media outlets, have published uh, articles around the, around the WikiLeaks disclosures. Uh, and you know, we, we feel that his extradition process that's underway is a very dangerous global precedent uh, for press freedoms. Um, it's an extraterritorial overreach by the US government, and not something you would expect from uh, you know, the beacon of global democracy. It's, it's uh, with all respect to uh, your listeners, it's something you might expect uh, from a totalitarian regime. So uh, you know, the Australian uh, recent polls in Australia have shown that nine out of 10 Australians would like to see Julian Assange freed. Uh, they'd like to see him home for Christmas uh, to sit down with his, his lovely wife, his two children, his brother and his father, like all of us, have, have a Christmas lunch with his family. Uh, and we would like to make it very clear to US lawmakers that uh, the Australian Parliament, who we represent across political parties, uh, also feel very strongly that uh, if the extradition proceedings continue, and especially if he is extradited to the US, um, increasingly our relationship will be seen through this prism uh, and one of, one of frustration. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Australia is uh, the closest of friends and the closest of allies with the US. Uh, and of course, close friends and allies should have mutual respect. Uh, but we don't feel that the, uh, the representations our government have made so far to the Biden administration have been, hurt, have been listened to. We've certainly seen a, uh, a disappointing response from uh, Secretary Blinken uh, when he was in Australia recently. So we felt like we had to jump on a plane and do 60 hours of travel to, to be here in Washington to meet face to face and look people in the eye and say, enough is enough. Uh, Julian needs to be freed. Well, well, Senator, I wanted to ask you, when you started this campaign five years ago in the parliament, you were a lone voice. Uh, there were only two of you. Now it's, uh, it's a quarter of the uh, Australian parliament. Uh, could you talk about the evolution of 
the 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 leadership's view in Australia and of the public's view in Australia about uh, Julian's case. Yeah, thank you. Look, it's it's a really good question. Um, I met with Julian's father, uh, John Shipton, yeah, nearly five years ago, and uh, um, he only got two meetings with uh, with decision makers in the Australian Parliament, and I was one of them. Um, I think it's fair to say that um, you know over over the last decade, there's been a very concerted. Uh, character assassination on on Mr. Assange, uh, and I think that there's there's a very, very deliberate strategy here to make him unpopular, uh, because ultimately an extradition proceeding, uh, especially on espionage charges, is a political charge, and we see Julian Assange as a political prisoner. But of course, if that would require a political solution uh, to have the extradition proceedings dropped. And if he was unpopular and people didn't like him, uh, then uh, no one would pay any attention uh, and the US government would be able to get away with this. So, you know, five years ago, uh, it's fair to say Julian was unpopular in Australia too. A number of people didn't want to engage on this issue. Um, but as we've campaigned to get the facts out there around this specific, uh, you know, details of the extradition, which relate to disclosures around the Iraq war, you know, not to disclosures around uh, the Sweden, you know, the, any any attempt for Julian, Julian to be uh, sent to Sweden or any uh, anything to do with, um, you know, the the cable gate disclosures with the U.S. election. And we've we've wanted to just get the facts in front of people that Julian is an Australian journalist. It's a foreign journalist to uh, your American listeners. It's the first time that the US government has tried to extradite a foreign journalist for activities on foreign soil. Um, it's never happened before. And of course, if, um, if a democracy like the US can do this, they can bring a journalist and put them in, in jail for 175 years, and we don't believe he'll get a fair trial here in the US. Um, what kind of precedent does that set uh, for other nations if a government who doesn't like what you've published and seeks your extradition and seeks to put you in jail to silence you and to make a very, let's be very clear about this, to make an example of you. Uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, the, the principle is a very simple one. Um, and as we've put these facts in front of people, as we've had discussions across parliamentary uh, lines, uh, as we've talked to the Australian media, uh, we've been able to actually put the details in front of people and they get it. They understand when you do that. So it has taken some time uh, to build this momentum. Uh, I think um, the documentary uh, about Julian's father, John Shipton, and his family, his brother Gabrielle and others there, the very personalised, uh, you know, film about their campaign to get Julian freed has helped, Jul has helped humanise Julian because, as I said, um, he's had a very, very significant hatchet job done on his... Uh, and, you know, he's been, he's been very deeply defamed on a number of levels and I don't believe there was any basis to truth on that. So it's actually <laughs> been about changing, changing the frame. To, to actually look at what, what is this specific issue of extradition and what are the global consequences if he is extradited to the US. And speaking of changing the frame, next month your uh, Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, is uh, planning an official state visit to the United States and will meet with President Biden. Uh, how could Assange's extradition case potentially influence the discussions in that visit? Well, I think it's very important that our Prime Minister does raise this again uh, with uh, US lawmakers, especially with the President. Uh, he's said on, he has raised this both privately and, of course, it was raised at a press conference in Australia with your Secretary of State. Uh, and to be honest, it's one of the reasons we're here. We want to make sure as our parliamentary delegation meets with US lawmakers as we try and raise awareness of this issue uh, amongst your listeners and other people in the United States, uh, that our Prime Minister feels it is an important issue for, for them to discuss publicly. Um, as I said earlier, this is, this is becoming a big issue in Australia. Um, you know, we are the closest of friends and while friends should be able to disagree, um, you know, we, we, we see uh, the very, especially re in recent, uh, in the last 18 months since the Albanese government, it's our Prime Minister's Anthony Albanese, the Albanese government has become you know, increasingly closer to the US, uh, especially in, in defence and security ties. Uh, the Australian government's looking at appropriating 
uh, you know, half a trillion dollars to buy uh, nuclear submarines from the US, for example. You know, as we become closer to the US, we feel there should be some quid pro quo here. Um, be, given we feel so strongly about this issue of Assange's release, that that should be the minimum we get back from the Biden government. What has the Prime Minister, in, in contrast. Pete, uh, Senator, what has the Prime Minister expressed so far uh, to Biden, either publicly or privately? Is he demanding his freedom or him, um, after he was extradited to the United States, to be released to Australia? He, he is, Amy. He, he said very clear, clearly, uh, similar to what you had there with Senator Wong, our foreign minister, he said he sees no purpose in the continuing incarceration or extradition of Julian Assange. Uh, he feels that it, enough is enough and it should come to an end. Um, and, you know, I think that's a very clear message. Uh, it is a different message to the last government. Uh, the Conservative government we had in Australia uh, didn't say anything about Julian Assange. Um, they didn't say anything negative about his extradition, but at the same time, they never made any public statements. So we have seen a sea change or a seismic shift in our, in our leadership commenting on this issue, which, which we welcome. Um, but we would like to see this backed up by action. Uh, you know, words are, words are cheap. Um, we would like to actually see uh, the Prime Minister set, you know, lay out to the US President and, uh, and other power structures here within the US that there will be consequences uh, if Julian Assange is extradited. We feel that's very important. To be very clear as friends... We have 10 uh, seconds. ...have a very frank discussion. Peter Wish Wilson, want to thank you for being with us. Has been an Australian Green senator from Tasmania in the Australian federal parliament since 2012. He co-founded the Bring Julian Assange Home Parliamentary Group nearly five years ago.